Hello everyone. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at naval air slash ship operations in command modern operations. So basically, when you're doing naval operations and air operations together, you're doing pretty much what is in the original name of Commando, which is Command Modern Air Naval Operations. So this is a huge part of what the game is all about. So I'm not going to pretend that we're going to be able to check every single box today. Keep in mind, tactics will change as era changes. Speaking of era, we're going to be dealing with 1992 today. All the equipment that is in this world or in our little scenario here is all 1992 equipment. Now, depending on the scenario designer that you're working with and what kind of scenario, this can change a lot. So make sure you read briefings carefully. Make sure you take a look at what the actual intention of the scenarios. Make sure you're familiar with forces. Speaking of forces, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have at our disposal. First of all, we have this little SSN Providence here. Let's see what it's equipped with. It's also always nice to take a look. Let's see what we have for Los Angeles. It looks like we have some harpoon missiles. That's going to be handy. Um, also down here at our carry action group, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can kind of take a look at what's going on here. We have, of course, uh, the CVN Abraham Lincoln. We have an Underwood, which is a nice little frigate. We could actually separate this to keep an eye out for subs. We have an Alec Burke. We have a Bunker Hill, it's a Tycho. And of course, we have another one, a Charles Adams. This is an older ship. Plus, you always have to have your uh, AOR ship as well. This is a pretty standard kind of carrier action group. That's all we have. Our objective today is apparently a Greek terrorists have decided to take over this a beautiful island over here. Arma 3 fans will probably recognize that island pretty much right away, but that's okay. It's one of the reasons why I selected it. And our job is to basically cripple them as quickly as possible. We are aware that they probably have naval assets. We're aware that they probably have taken over a runway. We know that they have surface terror missiles, and we also are aware that they probably have airplane and helicopters at their disposal, plus even a submarine. So it's going to be kind of a collective sort of operation. So anyway, let's go ahead and get going. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my Providence here and get him on surface duty. Now in this particular scenario, we actually go up to Scenario Editor and you go up to Features, you will notice that realistic submarine communication is turned on. That means that once we tell this submarine to dive, we're not going to be able to talk to him without giving him a call first, which that can complicate things. And it also means he's out of communication, so if we spot something on the surface, we have to tell him to come back up to the surface in order to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and define find this area right around here, kind of as his operational zone. So I'll go ahead and create my first mission. I'll do a sea control. Go ahead and do patrol. We'll go ahead and do a sea control patrol. <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and grab our handy dandy submarine add them to this. Now here's where things are going to get a little interesting in our thing. We're going to go ahead and make sure that the prosecution area is only this zone. I don't want him firing missiles into things that don't need missiles, as you'll see in a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off, shut that off, prosecution area, and I'm actually going to add all those points as well. Now since we have submarines selected, we're going to set the transit cruise throttle. And for station throttle, we're going to leave it at creep. For transit depth, we want to put this as deep as we possibly can get it so that he's able to go very, very quick to get to the area he needs to. Then he can come up to the surface to start looking around. So let's do 900. I think 900 feet will work pretty well. Uh, eh, whatever. Basically, he's going to hug the bottom. So that should work pretty good. And that is good to go. I'm going to kind of leave him alone and let him kind of maintain his own trouble once he gets there. We'll call him back up when we need to chat with him. The other thing is once we have identified some enemy targets, we can call him up as well to kind of let him know where they are so he can launch his harpoon missiles. Okay, so that's all set. Next thing we want to do is since we're working with a carrier action group, let's see what we have as far as aircraft goes. Looks like we have some F-18As and Cs. We have some Tomcats. We have some B Tomcats. We have a couple Vikings. We have Hawkeyes. Oh, nice. We also have some SH-60s. These are the older ones, but they're going to help us out as far as keeping an eye out for subs. We have a Huey and a bunch of Sea Sprites and things like that. So we need to decide how we're going to deploy our forces. First things first, though, we have to get these Hawkeyes airborne as fast as possible. Some people like to use the radar on board the actual ships themselves. If you wanted to do that, you can come over here to the uh, sensors window, you can hit this, and you can turn them on. I don't necessarily recommend that, because the moment you do that, you're basically announcing to everybody around you and their submarine that, hey, here I am because of your radar signals. That being said, if it's really, really bad weather, like uh, right now the weather I think is beautiful. Yeah, it's just hot outside. Um, if the weather was really, really bad, you're going to have to use radar because there's no way you can see an anti-ship missile coming before it hits you. So kind of keep that in mind and select your MCON appropriately. Again, that's not for another day. So anyway, let's go ahead and set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of reference points here. Deselect those other ones. We're going to go ahead and create one here. We're going to go ahead and create one here. I'll go ahead and select these two. Now I'm going to do something a little different this time. 
I'm going to link these reference points to my carrier action group. Probably sitting there going, why are you doing that? That way they move with the carrier group. So I'm actually going to put these guys oh, about right here. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now I'm going to go reference points. I'm going to say make it as fixed right to our friendly little carrier right here in the middle. I think I did not click the button when I did that. Change bearing type to do 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 make select fixed bearing. Click. Got it. So now as this group moves, these will move with them, which is going to work wonderfully for us. So I'm going to go ahead and create that AWACS mission. And go ahead and set a patrol. Let's do, actually not a patrol, what am I saying? This is actually considered a support mission. Press OK. Notice it's already selected those two points. Let's grab our AWACS. I'm going to actually shut one term. I'm just going to set it to one on station at a time. If that is good to go. Let's make sure that they know to turn their radar when we get there. Otherwise, they're pretty useless, right? And I think we are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and wait for them to get on station before they turn their radars on. Kind of dangerous, but it also means I could put their station over here just to confuse our opponents. So I'm going to make sure they get there quick. Go ahead and do that. Make sure it's max altitude. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing we want to do whenever we're doing a naval operation, especially an American-style one, we want to establish a carrier, basically a combat air patrol, to keep any enemy aircraft away from us. Fortunately for us, we have one of the best aircraft for this purpose, and that's the F-14s. Unfortunately for us, we don't want to make our zone of patrol too large, because we don't want to accidentally bump into any SAM sites they might have. So I'm pretty much going to do something probably about that big. If we go to game and we scoot over to browse scenario platforms, this is called cheating, let's see what they have for SAMs here. Uh, SA2s, SA3s, so what's the maximum range of an SA2 real quick? Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, that doesn't matter. Let's see what we have here. 30 nautical miles. Gotcha. So if we assume that they have a SAM site anywhere in the south part, we shouldn't be getting within 30 nautical miles, which puts it right about there, which is actually pretty darn close to what these two points are. So I'm going to go ahead and create another zone. Of course, keep in mind, enemies can come from any direction, so it's important that your zones are properly, appropriately, I should say, uh, sized here. I'm going to go ahead and do something that's going to kind of look like this. I'm actually going to grab the edges and pull it a little bit further out because I want to make sure we're covering over the land too in case something comes by and says hello. Keep in mind, the bigger your zone, the more aircraft you're going to need to actively safely patrol it. So let's go ahead and create another mission. We'll call this CAP. Go ahead to patrol, do AAW patrol. Sounds pretty good. Press OK. Let's go ahead and take a look at my F-14 buddies. So my F-14 buddies are not currently equipped with any weapons, which is such a bummer because it means we can't use them until let's see what we're actually going to get them. Uh, we haven't actually ordered them up to have anything. It looks like we won't get them for a total of three hours, which is a pretty significant chunk of time. But unfortunately, we just don't have a choice in the matter. So I'm going to grab all those. Load them up with the heaviest bar cap I can with these beautiful Phoenix missiles. Order them to be ready. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use them until they are done being ready. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this group. Let's ready these guys too. Those are the Bs or the As. We'll set that to that. We'll set them to quick mode. That doesn't mean they're going to load quick. Let's say 14 As. All right, those guys are loading up. 14 Bs, they're also loading up. So I'm going to grab these two groups of aircraft, and I'm going to kind of shove them in together. Keep in mind, they're not going to be on station until, let's see, it's going to be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So that could be dangerous. So we're going to have to rely on the surface-to-air missile capabilities of our ships if we get engaged during that time. So it's, it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, we do not want them engaged going beyond the uh, actual search area, because if they do that, you know exactly how that ends. All right, this is all set. This is all set. I'm liking the way that goes. All right, lots and lots of missions going on at once, but this is kind of the beauty of all this. Let's deselect everybody. Now we need to start thinking about anti-submarine warfare. We know because of intelligence that there's an enemy submarine active somewhere. So we're going to have to come up with a way to find that submarine and go ahead and destroy it. The key thing with submarines, though, is if we actually go over, this is why this is so handy, browse scenario platforms, uh, go to submarine. Uh, let's see what they have for a submarine here. Uh, submarine, they've got... A type 209. What do they have as far as weapons on a Type 209? We've got to be real careful. Looks like they have the Harpoon 1, which is not bad. 75 nautical mile range. So that means my ships can be engaged out to 75 nautical miles. Just checking the math on that one. That basically puts it here, which means my anti-submarine work has to be somewhere within 75 nautical miles, preferably a little bit before. We'd be gambling assuming that the enemy is not behind us or next to us or something along those lines. But for this particular scenario, I'm basically going to create an anti-submarine zone ahead of the main group and let the submarines, or I should say the uh, helicopters, do what they do best. First of all, make sure you deselect everything. 
Let's go ahead and create an area here. Um, I think it's going to be, again, like I said, we need to keep it about 75 miles out. Keep in mind, we're going to make this zone move also. Um, they could be on the side. We should keep an eye out. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and set this to a fixed bearing to the main carrier group as well. Beautiful. So that's good to go. So we're going to go ahead and create another mission. Nobody said this would be easy. We're going to call this ASW. We're going to set this to a patrol. We're going to call this an ASW patrol. Now I'm going to go ahead and get myself all these beautiful helicopters that we have at our disposal. We can even stick the Huey in there if you want. Stick them in there. They're going to take care of business for me. I'm going to tell them not to go beyond the patrol area. Otherwise, they're going to get destroyed. And that's going to be really, really embarrassing. So they're good to go. All set. Let's go ahead and deselect all reference points again. And now it's time to start thinking about what we're going to do to the island itself. So the island itself, as you can probably see right here, looks like they have an airbase. It looks like they have um, some SA-2Fs. It looks like they have, I believe, that's a port. And they have an SA-3. The reason we know they're there is because those are fixed sites. So chances are satellites spotted them months and months and months ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to order up some tam tamahawks. What's a tamahawk? Some tomahawks to do the deed. I'm going to go ahead and click this guy. I'm going to hold it, go to engage manual target. You will not automatically engage with tomahawks, thankfully, because you will waste them. <laughs> so anyway, we're good to go. Let's see here. What do we got here? Do we want to waste it on a tarmac space? Nah, not if I know there's nobody there. Ammo bunker is tempting. The fuel farm is very tempting. You don't need to bother any of these structures. Uh, the runway is interesting, but I'm actually going to leave the runway alone and leave, go right after the access points. So this looks like a pretty good collection. I'm actually going to remove the port. I get the feeling it's not going to do anything for me. So let's go ahead and get one of our ships that has the tomahawks. So there we go. So we cannot engage for another add to the warrior. Okay, so how many missiles is an ammo bunker going to take? So to figure that out, we could actually go over here into facilities. We could type in ammo bunker. Yeah, we can, I assume it's a surface ammo bunker. Uh, what do we got? 1600 damage points. Keep that in the back of your head for just a second. Because now we can go over to weapon and type in uh, Tomahawk. We'll go get a D model. Damage, 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 damage. 45. Actually, this is the wrong Tomahawk. You don't want to use this one. You want to use a conventional Tomahawk. There we go. 311. So, if you have a calculator handy, you can actually do the math. It's going to take six Tomahawk missiles to destroy that particular target. So let's keep that in mind and use six. Why not? So we're going to go ahead and call up six. Go to this one as well. I'm going to go ahead and launch six at him as well. We're going to go attack this. Oh, I wonder how strong those AV. Those, eh, if we're even able to cripple it. Again, we're disabling their ability to service the aircraft, not necessarily launch the aircraft at this particular time. So let's go double check that as well. Let's see here, facility. This is being very scientific. And keep in mind, if any of these get shot down, they're not going to be able to strike. So it's very important that we do BDA afterwards. So we have 40 by, let's see, 40, 40, 40. Scroll down, 40 by 150. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Let's see what we got for armor. 280. So it only takes a single tomahawk for that one. So we should really be sending two just in case one of them gets shot down. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll be cheap. We'll be cheap. Uh, we'll do that. Nice. The runway access point. Now, this is going to take some pepper to destroy. Access point. Whoop. we got to make sure we do. I should just left this thing open, to be honest. Access point. I think they're very large aircraft. How do we do in here? A thousand. So, a thousand is going to take four tomahawks to destroy that. Now, you're probably going, why am I destroying the access points instead of destroying the runway? Well, the reason for that is the fact that the access points allow you to get to the runway. If you destroy these, you're never going to have to deal with any enemies from that particular target. They're very difficult to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and allocate uh, four of these suckers. Go to this one. Allocate another four. Allocate another four. Awesome. So now we have the SA-2F and the SA-3C. Okay, what do we launch at these guys? This is going to be a little trickier, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, we could probably get the one from the Soviet Union. There we go. Check it out. So you're going to notice now that there is a minimum number of missiles that it usually takes to destroy this particular target. In this case, it says it's going to take the equivalent of eight harpoon missiles. Now, an SA-3 
is going to do a better job of destroying an incoming missile than an SA-2. An SA-3 is much faster, and it's also a better radar for that kind of stuff. So you're going to ask yourself, well, what's a safe number that we're going to need? Obviously, I'm not going to be shooting eight Tomahawks at this. It's just a waste of ammunition. So I would probably go with, um, let's say we'll go with four each. So I'm going to go to the SA-3 just real quickly. Now take a look at these guys. Seven equivalent. The SA-3s, I feel, are going to do a much better job shooting down Tomahawk. Tomahawk, by the way, fun fact, it's not a hard target to shoot down. Anybody who's played with Sam Simulator is probably familiar with this. Let's go ahead and grab the SA-2 as well. And I am all set. I am actually ready to start the actual game now, now that I've gotten everything kind of pre-built and preset. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Uh, apparently, we're off to a very good start here. Now, the cool thing here is um, basically our crews are going to be looking at these ships and going, what is this? And they're going to be trying to compare the emissions from this particular ship to whatever they have inside of their actual libraries in order to determine what kind of contact it is. So if you take a look and I click up at contact report after clicking on it, generic navigation radar. Let's see, it could be a cruise liner, it could be a fishing boat or a trawler. I think it's safe to say that's probably a neutral ship. Same thing with the civilian sailboat, which is not too far from us. So while I'm talking here, you'll notice that all these tomahawks are not going in a straight line. That's wonderful. They're actually spreading themselves out, and they're going to turn. You can actually click on the later models. You can actually um, designate with waypoints which you want them to do. By the way, the other thing you're probably confused to is why I have this random SSN just parked here. We know he's up here. The reason being is this is his last known position. Remember how we started paused? I can actually right click on him and actually call him up to say, hey, come up to the surface. We got to chat. But I'm not going to do that at this time, as you'll see. All right, let's speed up time a little bit. We'll let five minutes go by. I'm going to go ahead and pause. Okay, so what happened in that incredibly short period of time? So first of all, our beautiful, beautiful Hawkeye has gotten airborne, and he's done a spectacular job identifying aircraft everywhere. We have commercial aircraft, which probably makes them neutral. We have all sorts of unidentified aircraft. Of course, I could click them and go through each and every one of them to identify the radar. But more importantly, look what else we found. We were able to identify several enemy ships surrounding this island. How do we know they're bad guys? Well, they were stupid enough to turn their radars on. As soon as they did that, we were able to identify the types of emissions. And guess what? These emissions only come from this type of ship. That just made our life 100% easier. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to call up our buddy the submarine and have him launch harpoons on those guys. Now you're saying, why can't we use the harpoons for my carry action group? Because they have limited range. It's kind of a bummer if you ask me. But anyway, let's go get our submarine on the phone real quick. Hey, get up here. We need to chat. By the way, submarines can only launch submarine launched missiles, that makes sense, from shallow depths or higher. Some submarines actually have to surface in order to launch those types of weapons. But meanwhile, if you remember, we launched our huge Tomahawk strike. I'm a little annoyed that they separated like this because that tells me that when they do arrive at their destination, they're probably going to be shot down because they're going to come at bad intervals. But you never know. And again, we're just trying to cripple their airfoil. By the way, there's one access point still working. This battle, this technique did not work. But we're going to show up a little later on with proper weapons and pretty much clean house. So I'm not too, too worried about that this time. Time. Meanwhile, let's see what happened to our submarine buddy. I've called him up. It's going to take him a little while to surface, I'm sure. Yep. So we basically make a really, really low, deep sonar ping saying, hey, get up here. Keep in mind, he's probably right here or something like that. Come on. Come up to the surface. And notice several of these missiles already got shot down. Like I promised. That's pretty impressive, actually. Keep in mind this game. There he is. Stop. So now here's the cool thing. This submarine came all the way up to a minus 131 feet. He's basically just below the surface. He has the ability to engage these guys that are already visible with his harpoon missiles. They will never know it hit them. Now remember, he's still on a mission to patrol this zone and do damage, but there's nothing stopping him from engaging these targets at this time, which is going to be great because these guys will never know what hit them. Because all of a sudden you're just going to see a sploop and a missile is going to come flying out of the ocean. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, he's engaged defensive. Good. So he's basically working out the range right now. Yeah. See, this is his range limitation. Oh, some of our tomahawks arrived already. Speaking of which, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to tell our ships what we want our airplanes to be carrying. Whoops. 
that was sloppy. So we're going to go ahead and arm these guys. We're going to cheat just a little bit. I'm going to use walleyes. You're probably going, why a walleye instead of like, you know, a laser guided bomb or something like that? Well, if you take a quick look, the A models did not carry those. So I'm going to go ahead and say ready immediately. I'm going to cheat, but then I'm going to set time to ready. I'm going to do it for two hours because that's a little, that's basically what we said it was going to be anyway. So then we're going to go over to our C models. I'm going to arm half of these guys. I'm going to arm them with basically, uh, heavy, we'll go ahead and do walleyes also. Go ahead and enable that. Go ahead and set time to ready. Again, I'm cheating here just to demonstrate kind of a thing. All right, and now we're going to arm the last group of these guys with harm missiles because I have a feeling there's no way we're going to be able to get all those enemy SAM sites. It just doesn't work that way. All right, let's go ahead and check. My Tomcats are good, my Vikings, okay. What do we arm the Vikings with? The Vikings are an anti-submarine ship, in my mind. We can arm them with harpoons if we want to go attack the enemy ships, but honestly, the submarine's gonna get them. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm these guys with torpedoes. I'm gonna ready them immediately. Set time to ready again, I'm cheating here, but this would normally take three hours. We should have done it an hour ago. I think you got the idea. They're all set, the Hawkeyes are good, the Seahawks, those guys are all good. And we are all set. Okay, back to the action. It looks like our tomahawks are arriving again. Fireworks! Now there's a neat cheat we can use to see if we actually did any real damage here. Ah! Notice! Check it out. Our boy the submarine just launched his first round of harpoons. These earlier versions of the Los Angeles class could only basically launch stuff out of a tube. A little later on they actually got a vertical launching system, which of course you couldn't reload in the ocean, which eh, has its own problems. The other thing I'm noticing as I'm kind of looking is I keep picking up a signal from an enemy helicopter, so that's probably their anti-submarine assets. I also picked up an SA-8B, which we have not been able to identify yet. Now a cool thing we could do if we wanted to get a little technical is we could park one of our E2s here, and then we can park our other E2 over here to actually triangulate the position of where that particular SAM site is. I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. Notice our Los Angeles is just happily shooting away there. He's just kind of doing his thing. So I'm going to let him uh, snap those enemy patrol ships in half. Keep in mind, if we disable those patrol ships, it's going to be much simpler to sneak stuff in, such as the submarine. We could switch him to tomahawk mode. All right, I'm very curious as to what the deal with this aircraft. Do we know anything about his reports? Nope. So he's not emitting, which is going to make this difficult for us. My guess right now is the reason we lost that first set of Tomahawks is wherever this particular SA-8 is placed, it's probably right in the line of fire to get those cheap shots up this little, you know, kind of base sort of a thing like that. All right, everything looks pretty good so far. Basically, uh, whoa! Uh-oh! Say goodbye to that one. Nice. Sorry. Um, oh, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. So whenever you let a tomahawk go, it's just going to keep going. It's going to end up smacking into a fishing boat. Fingers crossed something bad happens to that missile. Hopefully, oh, hey, whoa, whoa. Let's really hope that didn't hit a fishing boat. That would have been bad. You have to be careful with any active guided weapons. And look at this. Look at this. And they've lost their second patrol ship. Nicely done. Nicely done. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set his depth to periscope depth, then I'm going to set it to automatic, so that he's going to go ahead and dive back in the water and keep doing what he's assigned to do. Let's go ahead and reassign him to that mission. Sea control. Go for a swim. We don't need to talk to you for a while. So meanwhile, how many harpoons does he got? Oh, he actually does have tomahawks. Nice. But we have six harpoons left, which is pretty decent. Pretty decent. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and... Uh, let's see here. I'm just trying to study everything we have here. No, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. Check this out. If you go to losses and expenditures, you can actually see how much damage you did. So it looks like we only blew up one of those tank farms. Sigh. We've got three other patrol ships. We did a number to their SAMs, but I don't see anything about the SAM radar. Oh, no, I take it back. We got a flat face, which is a search radar, and we got the... Um, Oh, nice. This is the fire control radar on board of the SA-3. That means that SA-2 is still active. So that means we're going to have to do a follow-up attack. See, in the real world, we have satellites and we have you know, BDA and all that other kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, target this group again. Um, let's see here. No, 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 no. Let's go get our Alec Burke. I believe he's got the Tomahawks. Keep in mind, when you're doing classic naval fights, you don't have these fun toys. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to manual targeting. We don't need these guys. Remove them from the list. Uh, we know that that's, you know, all these items are still existing. We'll go ahead and get rid of this. And obviously we left him as well. We can't, I imagine these access points are disabled. There's no guarantee that they are. Okay, so apparently our attack on the ant, these particular bunkers was not successful. But uh, we did get one of the gas tanks. So we'll go ahead and grab our buddy, the Alec Burke, again. 
we'll go ahead and launch one. Grab this guy, launch one. Our tank farm, I get grab and send two. And our SA2 buddy, we're going to launch two also. And that should be, uh, that's a pretty conservative launch. So in just a moment, you're going to watch all these tomahawks come ripping off over there again. These guys, by the way, the little uh, SH2s, they're going to start deploying all sorts of good sono buoys and things like that, desperately trying to locate where the enemy submarine is. Once we've disabled all the surface-to-air elements on this island, I'm going to let my S3s kind of do the rest of the work. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and speed up time. And there goes the next round of Tomahawks. Off they go. I'm picking up some new airplanes. Okay. Let's go ahead and reduce some speed. I got some airplanes coming. Ah, they're probably commercial. How do we know they're commercial? Probably from their radar, like everything. Yeah, from their radar. They're probably Airbuses or something like that. All right, taking a look here. We know there's an enemy helicopter. There's another enemy helicopter right there. And hopefully, yeah, we did. We got it. So we got the SA-2. So that means there's only SAMs remaining on this island have to be short-range SAMs because of the fact, well, on the flip side, if they're not emitting, we can't detect them. But if they were fixed, we'd see them. I think you get the idea. Okay. So let's go ahead and fast forward time properly. Get ready on the spacebar key if I see anything that shouldn't be there. Notice our helicopters are now spreading out and dropping these little sound buoys to basically listen in the water in the event that anybody makes too much noise. The nice thing about these buoys too is these ships can be identified by the sound their propellers and engines make. It's kind of nice. We can see that there's an enemy vessel kind of making their way here. No, oh, 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 stop. Okay, they're commercial. All right, I'm not worried about commercial airplanes. I just thought it was a little weird that they just started choo-chooing towards me. All right, keep an eye out. Keep in mind, none of my ship's radars are on right now. None of the sonars are on. There's nothing active about them. The only thing we're getting intelligence from is this poor guy right here. Little Blue Hawk number two. Good work, man. Oh, got another group of ships, or airplanes, I should say. Nope. Oh, stupid commercial planes. Not every s designer of a scenario is going to go crazy with elements like this. Some actually keep it pretty simple. It looks like my next victim is going to be this ship right here. <laughs> I guess I was a little too quick. This poor guy's about to get nailed. Goodbye. Uh, that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. That was really bad. You shouldn't let the harpoon go wide. Usually you have a self-destruct timer. Notice as helicopters run out of buoys or they run out of fuel, they automatically come back to the carrier, land, rearm, refuel, and then return. So um, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon is when we're going to launch our airstrike against the enemy base. Stop. Check it out. We're picking up a submarine Excellent. This poor submarine is about to become a victim. How do we know he's there? Why are we identifying? He's not stupid enough to turn his radar on. Sigh. That's got to get him killed. That also means this guy's going to be busy. All right. It is almost 2 o'clock. Delightful. Okay. Let's prepare our airstrike on the enemy airbase. Now, you could say, why don't you just keep hitting it with tomahawks? Well, that's no fun. Let's do it. So we're going to say strike base. We're going to do a land strike. Press OK. We're going to go ahead and uh, make sure nothing else is in here we don't want. Nope, that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of my buddies to help me out with this. So we're going to get all of these ship, air, I should say F-18s. But we're going to do something different. We're going to tell these guys to be escorts. Because again, they're going to be providing us with these harm missiles, which is going to make our life a little bit simpler. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and grab the other F-18s, log them on there, and we are good to go. So I'm going to go to Mission Doctrine, WRA. Let's go ahead and take a look at my weapons release. Um, so if it's an unknown surface contact, fire two. I'd actually prefer if it fires one. Uh, if it's an unspecified ship, we don't care about that. Uh, it's always saying if we don't know what type it is. Um, yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. I just don't want them to waste missiles if I don't have to. I'd much rather them re-attack. Keep in mind a walleye is a data link weapon, so you can talk to it all the way down to the ground. Ooh, runway facility unspecified. Uh, we'll, we'll say one round. Why not? Uh, we'll say mobile target. Yeah, you want to use missile defense because you can shoot those things down, and that looks good to me. All right, that mission is ready to roll. We're going to tell them to turn on their radar. Actually, they don't really need the radar today because it's good weather. Um, let's see how many of these. We have eight, so groups of four sounds pretty good. My escorts, I'm going to go ahead and say two as well, and I think I'm happy. Now, in the real world, I prefer to employ the F-14s as escort, but I think we've done a pretty good job crippling that enemy airfield. I don't think we're going to have problems. Also, the F-18s can defend themselves. 
Keep in mind, if this were a slightly tougher opponent, they would most likely be engaging us with other things. I really want to grab one of my helicopters and just be like, can you, can you kill that real quick? <laughs> I'm just going to tell them to go. <laughs> Fingers crossed that they don't launch any missiles or anything at that. All right. So now I've gone ahead and ordered up my mission. In just a moment, the aircraft carrier is going to spew air. Here it comes. It's just going to spew airplanes like crazy. All right, pause. There's one thing I want to change, though. I'm going to go back to strike base. Under escort doctrine, I need to tell him not to waste the harms. So I'm going to say you can use up to two at a time. Actually, even better. Let's use uh, half of the enemy's weapon missile defense value. That's just going to be safe. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of harms, and that's going to suck. The other thing I want to do, too, really quickly is under uh, WRA, is I want to go ahead and tell it, feel free to or just keep shooting even after you've missed the first time. All right, here we go. Who's this, an F-14? Yeah, it's an F-14. I was really hoping... What is this, a torpedo? No, it's an enemy. Whoa, stop, 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 stop. Sorry. So notice the reach we have with these weapons is incredible. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's an anti-ship missile battery. My friend, you are about to receive a Tomahawk land attack missile. My apologies. Uh, we'll give him two because we're just being rude. Sorry, taxpayers. Now notice these F-18s drop these walleyes from an incredible distance. But the best part is, is these particular weapons are data linked, which means that they can just fly in a circle and keep talking to the missile all the way down to the ground. I wonder who this is. Do we know anything about that one? I'm actually going to take a look at that real quick. Nope, we don't. So we better investigate that guy. Hopefully this um, helicopter doesn't find out the hard way. That's another one of those patrol vessels. So anyway, let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. Our missiles are zooming in. I'm avoiding TAC view today, so I don't spoil too much of the fun. And this poor place is about to get hammered. Ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, that hurt. Ow. Here comes the next round. Notice, after they succeeded, they dropped a second round of walleyes in order to engage the targets that were already destroyed. This doesn't always work, but in this application, it actually worked pretty well. I'm really paranoid about that SA-8. I have not seen it yet. Keep in mind, SA-8s have to operate from pretty low altitude, so um, there's a chance that it'll do something silly and accidentally engage one of those walleyes, for example, in which case it's going to get hammered by those harm missiles in about two seconds. It does bother me we haven't been able to identify where the island it is though. Maybe we killed it earlier for example. I might have missed it. We'll find out. Here comes another wave of walleyes. Here comes another wave. Again, notice we're re-attacking because we have a good sight on the target. And our little dude right here is going to just cruise all the way out here and blow that dude up. We'll go ahead and call up our SA-3s. Uh, not SA-3s. Our S-3s. My bad. To take care of that as well. Now you probably notice on the side of these targets that you have two different numbers. They basically tell you how many people are aiming at them versus how many weapons are currently committed to them. So at this point, there's two missiles on the way, which, as you recall, were our Tomahawk missiles that we launched a little earlier. So that worked really, really well. So my fingers are crossed that our little Argonaut number 5 here gets close enough to deploy his missiles. Now, modern submarines actually have anti-aircraft missiles on board. So if this guy were to get spotted, he could actually get shot down, which makes it a little bit tougher. Now, what's his range down to? Yikes. He is almost out of range. He's going to have to turn around in about a second. Oh, no. He's going to run out of range. I'm going to go ahead and get myself an S3 in a second to go take care of the rest of this. But, oh, boy. This is his range circle. Look at this. Is he going to make it? He's going to drop two torpedoes and get the heck out of there. Pause. I'm actually going to manually order him to fire everything. Because otherwise, he's only going to get one shot at this. So, Closer, closer. Now, this guy was stupid because he accidentally left his radar on at periscope depth. Uh, you didn't seriously just drop that, did you? Fire, 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 fire. What about the other one? Yes! Go back home. Oh, we got him! Oh, we didn't sink him. Now, notice this torpedo does a big donut, locks onto him, and coaches chasing after him again. Ah, ha, ha, come get some. Uh-oh. <laughs> what happened? Maybe he changed that. Maybe he's sinking. Nope, it got him again. Okay. I think that's the scenario. The last thing we need to see in our little scenario here is... Is, uh, it looks like I didn't need the S3s. I'm actually kind of impressed. My guys did a really good job. So the only thing I want to watch is our Tomahawks kind of do the deed against this you know, surface-to-surface -surface missile battery. For that, we'll go get the 3D view. i to put that right there. Oh, boy. It's going to take a second to load. There it is! 
Wow, these tom look how low off the ground these tomahawks are. Now, if you're curious, if you click on your submarine, he's actually under the water. It's so cool if you really think about it. Now, why he's still at that depth when I told him to go a little bit deeper earlier kind of bothers me. So I'm actually going to order him down. He's going to go underwater, and I won't be able to see him again for a while because he's going to get too deep to communicate. By the way, submarines use floating wires. That's kind of their technique if they want to be underwater and still communicate. So anyway, our tomahawks are rushing in here to the enemy uh, target range here. Oh, it looks like we missed something, like a SAM or something like that. By the way, F-14s are great reconnaissance platforms, in case you're curious. No, we definitely missed something. There's an SA-8 we didn't get. That's okay. I think we've done an awfully good job. And we're going to go ahead and check the losses in just a second. I think you guys have had a pretty good idea as um, kind of the different elements of this as it is. Oh, we didn't kill it. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, well. All right, let's see what happened. So this whole mission started at 11 o'clock. It's now uh, 14 o'clock. So doing the math on that real quick, that's been about almost four hours just about from the time we started. Let's see how much damage we did. So if you take a look here, we used 24 walleyes, which honestly, that would be all of them. We wouldn't have that many. We've gone through tons of sono buoys, which is good. We've also gone through a couple torpedoes, tons of tomahawks. Keep in mind, if this were a non-tomahawk-able mission, we wouldn't be so spoiled and be able to use these things for everything. And we've only gone through eight harpoons, which is actually pretty cheap. Scrolling down here, we got their tank farm of fuel that's on fire, their airport terminal, their control tower. We got 12 enemy fighters, make 28s. We got helicopters. We got their little truck that has a surface service missile. We got four of their ships, one of their subs, all of their SAMs, except for that SA-8. He got lucky. Plus all their radars. Now check this out. The only thing they shot at us was a few 76 millimeter rounds, probably in defense of the harpoons. A couple of Ku-60 coys. That was a sub. They used plenty of these. These are basically sono buoys looking for our sub. They went through three SA-3s. Remember I told you those guys are pretty good at engaging uh, tomahawks? But look at the SA-8. We went through 12 of those. So we actually, no wonder they didn't attack us. is because they ran out of ammo. So anyway, hopefully you found that information like slash tutorial kind of helpful. This is like a general naval operation. Keep in mind, if you're going against tougher ships, you have to change your tactics. But in general, that's kind of how I manage things. Enjoy.